All right, welcome back. Uh, let's continue from where we stopped. Uh, let me just present the notes. OK, so engage your team. Uh, together, everyone achieves more. Uh, OK, let's get into accountability. And stay the course when the going gets tough. Right? Uh, Proverbs 24 and verse 10. 2410. If you are weak in crisis, you are weak indeed. Uh, the word accountability simply means, um, you know, having somebody to speak into your life or being accountable. Right. So I, I'm. It's not like I'm just doing whatever I feel like doing. Right. Uh, you're being accountable to someone. Who are we account as as people as believers? Who are we accountable to first? To God, right? we are accountable to God. Then we are accountable to our uh, employers or our leaders, right? So, accountability with subordinates and leaders is very important. Uh, there will be times when things are going hard, right? seasons of difficulties, working for more than eight, nine hours, ten hours, twelve hours a day. Uh, things are getting tough, right? But uh, that's when you stay the course. Say, okay, God, uh, things are getting stuff in this season. Uh, you know, this whole cycle of reporting, reviewing, planning, and just repeating it on a weekly basis or on a monthly basis. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it's not easy, right? When you have these deadlines and targets to meet and you've got to put in all your effort, uh, this is when you stay the course. Don't just say, okay, because it's so difficult, I don't want to, I want to quit the job doesn't work that way right so be accountable stay the course during times when it's getting challenging right remember these challenging seasons uh can keep us motivated also right so it's all about how you look at it right you can look at something and you say okay it's too difficult i want to quit or you can look at it and say hey i'm able to overcome this so i i, I can motivate myself to do well and overcome the challenge that I see ahead, right? Uh, next one, some lessons learned are more valuable than the profit gained. Proverbs 3, 13 to 17. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of, length of days is in her right hand, in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of peacefulness, and all her paths are peace. In the process of execution, you and I will learn valuable lessons in that process. Now, a lesson learned is great personally. If a lesson is learned, you have learned a lesson personally, it's greater than someone telling you. And it's like, for example, healing. If you've gone through a healing in your life, you know God's healing power. But if somebody doesn't hasn't gone through you know, or didn't need a healing in their life, uh, they're talking out of not from experience. It is, they are talking from what God is saying, which is also very beneficial. But when we talk from lessons learned, it adds value. Right? Look at scriptures. When God taught his people, when God wanted to raise up leaders, he made them go through valuable lessons. Right? Moses learned a valuable lesson. What? Don't act too smart. Learn to control your anger. All he did was kill the Egyptian. He shouldn't have done it. But I'm sure that's a life lesson he would have learned. Right? So maybe when he was um, 40, started looking after sheep. Now from where to where? From the palace to looking after sheep. Now imagine that 40 years he may have thought, why did I do that? I should have just walked out from that situation. 
but he was full of zeal no but he learned a valuable lesson so when he was 80 front of the burning bush he's saying i don't know i don't want to go i'm not good enough uh you know i'm not learned enough i don't know how to speak all kinds of excuses why because he learned a lesson right? lesson learned is always valuable and you look at after 80 when god called him you know the bible says i think it's in numbers where it says there was no one as humble as moses and in exodus it says that he was well learned eloquent in speech he's the one who's writing it right so so he learned that you know these being eloquent in speech and being well learned is not the answer for everything that in the burning bush he said i'm nothing don't, don't send me i don't know how to speak and you see that drastic change so lessons learned in life are the most valuable lessons make a note of the lessons that you learn both positives both negatives make a note of them and when we say make a note of them you can either write it down or you can you know lessons learned is there in your spirit 20 years down the line also you'll remember it because that's lesson learned oh i did it this way but uh, i learned the lesson i shouldn't have done it that way and and now you know this is the thing so uh, this is the outcome of that mistake that i made so practical learning during the process is very important now 10 years down the line if i ask you all what are the lessons learned in bible college you're not going to say in second semester i learned about uh, timeless principles you're not going to say that you're going to talk about the lessons that you learned right meaning the the life um, that happened during bible college you're going to you're going to remember that it's going to be there right and so learn from it and make a note of the positives and the negatives above all else let god be in charge proverbs 16 3 put god in charge of your work then you will have you then what you've planned will take place and right? so as you plan you put god in charge of the work lord this is what i've planned god i commit these plans to you right uh, commit your ways to the lord and he will direct your paths I think Proverbs has plenty of verses. Right? Commit your thoughts, commit your ways, commit your works to the Lord, um, and He will direct us. Let God be in charge. You plan, you come up with a strategy to execute, and say, God, I'm surrendering it at your feet. You execute it. You be in charge. Right? And when you look at the Old Testament, God is a master executor of plans and strategies. From the time of Moses, right? Look at the way he executed these people, right? How he planned it. There's going to be these plagues and diseases that will come, but none of them will touch the people of Israel. All these plagues. In one day, the people came out of Egypt. He planned for them to walk through the desert. He planned for them to get into the promised land. He executed that plan. He saw the walls of Jericho, he came up with a plan. He said, you do this. He came up with a plan to, you know, to stop the sun, where the sun stood still. Strategies and plans, that's how God is, right? Of course, he's a God who can change anything at any time, but he can enable us to work with the strategy. He can give us the strategy, right, and work with us. So. So planning and execution is very, very important as believers. Uh, even as you get into an organization or your ministries, plan. Don't be without planning. And I would say start planning now. If it's five years down the line, also start planning now. Right? And then come up with the execution will change over time, right? So what we are doing now, five years down the line, we may have better equipment, better, uh, you know, ideas, better strategies. That's okay, but you put it into paper right? and commit it to God. All right, any questions on this chapter? No questions? Okay. Uh, Is there any practical... Uh, guidelines that you can give for ministry planning. Practical guidelines for ministry planning. 
Yeah, we, basic, we, are, we already have a vision. Uh, there are some basic guidelines, right? Yeah. Um, okay, I'll just share briefly. Uh, this, uh, I don't want to go completely off uh, topic, but uh, see, if you if you feel that you you're talking about wanting to start from scratch or already an organ uh, uh, church, the church is going has an organization also, right? So you're working. Okay, so yeah, you see you what what you're doing right now, continue to do and ask God for new strategies. See, when we started, like for example, any ministry, any church, when they started, they would have started with Sunday services, life group. Right? Maybe those two things. Over time, new ministries, new ideas, new plans, new strategies was birthed. Right? So again, you need to ask God for ideas. So some of it is practical. Okay, what do I do with the uh, you know men of the church? Let's start a men's ministry. Women, a men's ministry. Very simple. We don't we don't have to pray for that, right? But the strategy you can pray and ask God how I go about it. Right? Then children's church. Okay, there are children. You have to come up with the children's church, right? So what do we do for them? Uh, so in terms of in, in ministry, what you want to do in the church, nowadays everything is there, right? Meaning we know, okay, men, women, single adults, you can add all of these over time. Um, but even as you add this, very important, we talked about, you know, raising up leaders, getting the right people in place. So you can envision, envision your ministry. So you, you, for example, you may have 60 people in your church. You have maybe 25 men in that 25 men 10 men are interested right for uh, in men's ministry so you get all the men say okay once a month we will meet meet with them once a month talk to them minister to them it'll take time right uh, but what you can also do is you can share the vision hey one day as a men's ministry this is what we want to do now we are 10 but one day so then over time you you know, you purposely slowly step back. You give somebody an opportunity. Let them uh, share or let them teach. Then you get that person to involve with you in planning. Hey, we want to have a men's uh, conference. So hopeful day conference in church. So you get them involved. In the logistics, you can get them involved. Say, okay, you prepare this, you know, the timetable or the agenda for the day. You prepare what has to be for lunch or tea, and you do the logistics. So you're getting him involved. Then slowly you tell, okay, I'll give you one session to teach. Right? So what you're doing is you're building the ministry. Right? So like that, you you start it, and then you build on it. Right now, there will be certain ministries that uh, you may have thought of, but it's not yet time to start. Right, so don't throw it away. Write it down. Keep it. Right. So for example, you know. You have 50, 60 people. But your vision is, okay, as a church, I want to see us in the worship like a full band with in years and a good, strong band. And we should have like a good lighting and nothing wrong with all of that, right? Good lightings and good sound system. But now you're 60 people. You, you cannot afford to have such uh, high-end equipment. And you don't have the people. But envision it. You write it down. And you say, okay, one day, we will get good equipment. One day, we will get people to play those equipments, uh, musical instruments as well. And one day, we will have our, a good sound and sound team or a worship team. So you envision it and you begin to work with it. Uh, so again, it's it's like starting from scratch, right? You, you. So I remember the sound and setup. Like I always say, right? The sound was never like how it is now. Never. This is very unique. Over time, it's come this way. It was never, if you see, if you go back to 2010, I don't know if 2010 videos are there, but 10, 11, if you see, it was just general stuff which everyone were using, right? We, we had speakers everywhere, monitors, speakers, bass amp. Um, the stage was fully crowded, no LED screen. But over time, right? I'm sure, you know, there was a vision that one day it'll be like this. Right. But you had to work towards it. Uh, it took us, what, I would say maybe 14 odd years to get to where we are right now. Right. So we got to be patient in that journey as well. Right. So, okay.
so what I thought was we'll move into chapter 12. Chapter 11, profitability and corporate finance. We'll come back to it towards the end if we have time. But I want to talk about strategic partnerships. I know, very important, strategic partnerships. Now, uh, in an organization or in a ministry, partnerships are very important. What is the meaning of partnership? Where there is two or two or more people joining together, using their strengths, using their abilities, using their skills, their technical abilities, their leveraging their uh, skills that they have, and they partner together to get things done, right? Now, when it comes to partnership, we must be very careful. We must know who to partner with, why to partner with these people, and whether the vision is at least in some way aligned with each other. Whether the, you know, the, the character character there's character involved there is vision involved there's many things that are involved when you come because a wrong partnership can just destroy an organization and we've seen it in the world right where people have tried to you know involve or partner with certain organizations and they said bad move but sometimes good move brilliant move and let me give you this example in, I forget the year, but you know, we know the car, no? Maruti, Maruti car. So it was initially only Maruti. And they were not doing well, right? In India, they were not doing well. It was, Maruti is an Indian company. This is just an example, right? Maruti is an Indian company. And they were not doing too well in automobile industry. Okay, right? Not performing too well. But then Suzuki came in. Yeah, Suzuki is a Japanese, if I'm not wrong, Japanese organization. Uh, and they said, hey, we'll partner with you. We'll partner with you. And so we'll make it in a way that together we'll do automobile. Was it a good move? Brilliant move. What happened? Skyrocketed. Maruti Suzuki. All, all, if you, if you look at, uh, you know, the, cars that are there, it's exactly the same that are there in other countries, right? But it'll be written Suzuki, it won't be written Maruti. But here it's Maruti Suzuki. It's, it's just that there was a strategic partnership which the organization which was going to dissolve and die off, this partnership enabled this entire company, this organization to continue. And it's doing well, right? So there are some which are very good. The partnership has uh, uh, been fruitful, but there are some where it has caused complete failure and uh, that could be for many reasons. So let's look at a few scriptural insights when it comes to partnering with people. Now, what about in ministry? You know, uh, in ministry, we'd like to partner with, uh, with different ministries. Sounds nice, no? You believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus, let's partner together. No, 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 don't do that. Be wise, right? So we look at a few scriptural insights, right? An ox and a donkey cannot plow together. Okay? Uh, Deuteronomy 20.10, don't plow with an ox and a donkey yoked together. We talked about this. Can you picture it? An ox and a donkey? What will the ox do? Ox is meant for plowing. It'll go. Now what is the donkey doing? It's standing there only looking left and <laughs> the donkey saying, no, I'm not going to go. But the ox is saying, hey, come on, man, let's finish the work. And then lunch break after that. And then we come back out into the field. And then when it's five o'clock, we finish. The donkey is saying, what work? I will do it later. It's two different mindsets all together. The donkey is saying, I want some water. I'm tired. The ox is saying, come on, what we do? It's only five minutes. Fast. Get the work done. Don't plow with an ox. Both are farm animals. But both have different mindsets. Both have different capabilities. And you put them both together, you, there is a recipe for disaster. 
or a recipe for failure. The ox is going to beat up the donkey, <laughs> and the donkey will, you know, is, is that's why the word is stubborn as a donkey. Donkey will say, No, I will not go. I will go only after I get some water to drink. That's how it is, right? So, uh, don't, it's a simple lesson on is that the capable compatibility is critical in partnership. What is compatibility? Compatibility means to see whether you're on the same wavelength, same skill set, right? Uh, and you're able to coordinate with each other. An ox and a donkey cannot. Why? An ox is much stronger. It's designed to work on the plow, work in the field. A donkey is not designed for that. So if you partner them, it's only going to fail. Right? So even in, in, in strategic partnerships, if a, if a partnership is one-sided, if one person is doing all the work, it's not usually it will not be a success. Right? Just picture that an ox, a donkey trying to plow a field. It's not going to be a success. It is better off if the farmer just removes the yoke and puts the yoke on one ox, he will get more work done. Because this donkey is only being a hindrance to the ox. The ox is ready. The donkey is being a hindrance. So when you partner with people, right? make sure you partner with the right people. Put everything down. Next point, right? Know whom you're dealing with. Dig deeper to get all the facts. Proverbs 27 and 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. When you plan to partner with somebody, get everything, dig deeper, understand every aspect of the organization, what you will do, what you will not do, put it all on paper. The mistake we make is we may say, Hey, uh, both of us are ministry, no? We both are friends for 30 years. So we we'll partner together, but we've not put it on paper. Now, what's happened? 30 years friendship gone down the drain within six months. Has it happened? Yes. Why? Not put anything on paper. Know what you're dealing with. Just because he's your friend for 30 years, don't partner with him. You've got to see the skills, see the capabilities that the person has or if it's ministry just because somebody's you know in ministry is maybe a person is their ministry is very big and you know the church is very big and uh, they say hey why don't you partner with me don't just say yes because they are big in ministry remember the visions may be completely different now imagine you partner with them your vision is to start a bible college and to minister to people to teach and to uh, release and plant churches now, this church, maybe 1,000 people or 1,000 people in the ministry, their vision is, is more of you know maybe uh, evangelism. So he's telling you, go and do evangelism. You're telling, no, I want to teach people. I want to start Bible college. You see, the vision is it's two-sided. Two so then it's very hard for you to get out of it. So put everything down on paper. And we have... Uh, even when we, you know, sometimes we very rarely partner with ministries. But I remember one of the ministries that we partnered with was on the Power to Change campaign, which is a global campaign. It happened in 2014, I think. Yeah. So it was a Power to Change campaign. People's testimonies were played, and uh, you know, it, it was a global campaign, right? Uh, books were given, uh, and people would call in for prayer. They would read the books, and uh, you know different testimonies of people who overcame you know drug addiction uh healing and different different uh testimonies were put in so it was a global um you know uh, ministry effort so one of the things we said is okay on pay we will do these one we will distribute books and we'll set up a uh you know a posting system we will do one-on-one -on -one book distribution and we'll also post why because we have we post all our publications right so we already knew the vendors we knew the people so we said hey we'll give you books you post it every month you just send it by post we'll give you the addresses everything so here as a team they were getting the addresses of people they, they would call and they say I, I would like some of those books okay give your address everything we'll stick it post it to them 
So we are doing part, we're fulfilling part of that bigger vision. But they didn't expect us to go to different countries or go to different places. And we put the expectations already. This is what I can do. My strengths as a church, our strengths is we can do the distribution. And we can also uh, do the calling. So we hired people. I remember we hired part-time, full-time people to make calls from the church office. So we said, we can do this, two things. And we did it. Right. So when you commit to something, do it. Otherwise, don't commit and not do. That becomes a bad partnership. Our name will be affected, right? So when you, uh, you know, when you partner with people, look at motivation. Why do they want to partner with you? Right. Uh, especially now, if you're if you're a small organization, then it's okay. But when you grow, you become known in a city or a. Uh, you know, in the nation, people know you as an organization. Better check why people want to partner with you, right? And be wise about that. Next, uh, evaluate work approach before saying I do. Proverbs 1 10 through 15. Proverbs 1 10 to 15. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, Come with us, let us lie in wait to shed blood. Let us lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like shawl and whole like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of precious possessions. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in your lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, do not walk in the way with them. Keep your foot from their path. Evaluate your work approach. So think of this, right? Any organization, the end result we want is being successful and being profitable. Any organization, right? Being successful, being profitable. Now, here we must ensure to see how we get to be successful and prosperous, pro, you know, profitable. Are we using the right methods or are we using unscrupulous methods? Meaning, are we using methods that are wrong? That is not uh, that is you know uh, uh, not legally right, right? Uh, what what methods are we using? So this is very important. Don't use unscrupulous methods to achieve success. And profit. Right? Go through that work approach. How am I going to do the work? What are the remember the non-negotiables we talked about? What are the things I will do? What are the things I will not do? Whereas these are things I will not do. So, how will you approach your work to achieve success and profit? That is very important. Yes, we want success and profit, uh, but how you go about it. Is very important now. When you look at an organization, uh, in what what's happening around us, uh, they don't care about how the things are getting done as long as it should get done. Right? Whether it's so, uh, the method is right or wrong, it doesn't matter. But the work should get done. That's not how how we should be. Right? Evaluate your work approach, uh, and and make sure that you don't do something just for you know gain. Choose the wrong path because these wrong paths will later you'll end up. You may see success, but it's only going to be bitter later on. Right? Uh, because remember, the truth will the truth is always going to get exposed. And the lies are going to get exposed. So being truthful, uh, you know, in work approach there will be different styles of work approach, um, but. Be careful on how you partner with people. Evaluate the work approach. If you feel that they, there is nothing unscrupulous, they, they are um, they're working with integrity and there is everything is done in uh, an honorable way, you can think about partnering with them. Check alignment of culture and values, especially in mergers and acquisitions. Uh, meaning the same thing. Uh, you know, check whether the you know the the culture and the values are at least some way in line. It's not like it should be exactly the same, right? But some way it's aligned together. Agreement is important. Put everything in writing. Very important. Let's read that. Amos three three. Amos three three. Can two walk together unless they are agreed? Agreement. 
the mistake that you know especially believers make is trusting people by their word i'm not saying don't trust people trust people but also put it on paper right for example uh, you, you know you are going to stay in somebody's uh, you want to uh, you know rent a house this house is a christian is a believer right the whole day he is only praying he knows everything from the bible and you are so happy oh i have got a owner who is a believer say now don't say okay no no need agreement i'll give you the money this is the rent i'll pay you now that is the biggest mistake that we can make no, never right because now one year down the line you'll leave example you've paid 1 uh, lakh as a deposit he'll give you back 10000 and you're leaving he says oh, brother i paid 1 lakh who said i don't remember you giving me 1 lakh right so never go by people's word right i'm not saying every one are like that put everything on paper get it legal there should be no misunderstanding at all right um so for example you're partnering with uh, an organization for a conference put it on paper right so as a church for example you have a church you're a church leader you have a letter head with your this thing put it on paper right so this is the terms of our agreement in terms of this conference there's there's, there's, there's we are putting in 5 lakhs you are putting in 5 lakhs uh, this is the budget that has come in uh, and uh, and so anything above this will be resolved uh, after the event on a 50 50% basis and if there's uh, something if there's an amount remaining it will be resolved on a 50 50% basis this is the agreement signed by this church ministry signed by this church ministry legally signed by both of them they have it on paper both are ministries right so agreement put everything on paper so for example you're going to go start a church you need a place put it on paper first thing i don't say he the owner will say you start the church i'll we'll do the agreement later no don't do that get the agreement that church is okay it can start two weeks later nothing will happen first get the agreement then get things up don't be in a hurry to start things um and not doing it the right way you get what i'm saying right do things the right way <laughs> build business partnerships steadily proverbs 25 and verse 17 and when you find a friend don't out be a your welcome show up at all house and he'll soon get fed up Marriages take time to build. Not only marriages, friendships. Friendships also take time to build, right? It's not like uh, you meet somebody and the next month you say he's my best friend. It's not going to happen. It'll take time to build. So the same way in partnerships, you go through rough patches, you go through unexpected challenges, uh, but you work steadily, you work cautiously, you work patiently, uh, you work out things with a clear understanding, and over time, um, you know. partnerships can be really strong uh, with good relationships uh, because uh, what's happened is you've built built into a team right you feel like hey uh, you know we are like working together and it's nice there there's understanding there is planning there's execution happening so you can uh, there's good there's adaptability there's mutual understanding that's wonderful when it happens that way right? and you will only see the organization get better right so when it comes to you know uh, building partnerships build it steadily take your time uh and build on it right get all on board to work the partnership genesis 13 1 through 7 let's read that abraham went not out of egypt to the southern part of canaan with his wife and everything he owned and lord went with him 
Abraham was a very rich man with sheep, goats, and cattle, as well as silver and gold. Then he lived there and moved from place to place, going toward Bethel. He reached the place between Bethel and Ai, where he had come uh, camped before and had built on altar. There he worshipped the Lord. Lot also had sheep, goats, and cattle, as well as his own family and servants. And so there was not enough pasture land for the two of them to stay together, because they had too many animals. So his quarrels broke out between the man who took care, uh, took care of Abraham's animals and those who took care of Lot's animals. At the time, the Canaanites, Canaanites, and the uh, Perizzites were still living in the land. Now, this is a beautiful example of uh, you know, partnership. Now, if you read the story, Abraham and his nephew Lord, God had blessed them. They had everything that they needed. They had servants, they had cattle, and they had hundreds and hundreds of them. Now, God prom God told Abraham. I'll take Abraham and Lot, I'll take you to a good land. Right? So now what's happening? Abraham, his family, his servants, his uh, cattle, his herd, everyone are going. And here there's Lot, his family, cattle, herd, everything. So now you've got like two teams, both highly blessed, rich. They're journeying together in the desert. Now what is happening is, Abraham and Lot have a good understanding with each other. But in between these people, there came disagreements. And this Abraham's cattle is always coming to our side. They are always one beside. They are always, you know, whenever we go, how come Lot is getting the better, Lot's uh, uh, cattle is getting better and their employees are, you know, their uh, uh, people are getting better water, better facilities, you know, they get to sit in the shade and we are sitting in the sun. How come? So there's misunderstandings between the people. But Abraham and Lot are like, okay, they're going together. Very important. In the end, what happened? Because of the disagreement, Abraham had to choose. Abraham said, you choose one way, I'll choose another way. We have to depart from each other, separate from each other, so that there is no more disagreements. So Lot said, I'll go this way. Abraham said, okay, I'll choose the other direction. So in partnership, it's not only about the leaders making the partnership. It's also the employees who are involved. Imagine two leaders, they say, oh, they shake hands and they make a good uh, partnership. But those in the organization saying, I will not give my 100% for this. It's not even a good partnership. And they're just there, you know, not, not. Uh, giving their hundred percent, just they are just working, or eventually they may just leave the organization. But the leaders are happy. No, just because the leaders are happy doesn't mean you can go on with it, right? You try to get the employees involved, share the vision, share what you are doing. So, if in case it's a church, I remember when we went through this power to change, Pastor had called us. He said, "This is what the plan is. We will do this, this, this." Everyone get involved. It was like rebuilding a wall. The pastors also will make calls and talk to people. Yeah. So it was all well organized. We all knew what we're doing. But we knew that this is just a season. As pastors, we knew we're not going to keep taking calls, making calls. It's just a season till the campaign is over. right? So uh, get all on board when you go through these kind of uh, partnerships. Let go when you have to. Genesis 13, 8 and 9. Genesis chapter 13, verse 8 and 9. Then Abraham said to Lot, We are relatives, and your men and my men should not, shouldn't be quarreling. So let's separate. Choose any part of the land you want to. You go one way and I'll go the other way. It is, I mean, it's a very wise thing. He said, see, 
your men and my men are quarreling we cannot control them so let's go separate ways right now remember that all part most of the partnerships may not work don't be afraid to part ways right part ways it's okay uh, people may talk oh see they join and then uh, now they've parted ways that's okay but you are being cautious because you're protecting your organization you want to develop your organization you want to build your uh, ministry or organization that you're doing and do it soon enough before the ship sinks meaning do it before you've come to the last stage and then you say okay now we have to part, part ways no when you see it as a leader you should see foresight okay this is not something that's going to work out make the decision right you you probably can call your core team or call your employees those who are uh, you know involved in decisions say see this is what it is <clears throat> and, and we want to stop doing this so that why so that our organization is better and we can at least move forward right uh, finally resolve disputes peacefully if possible whenever there are disputes in strategic partnerships make every attempt to resolve it peacefully once settled learn to keep quiet and don't go publicizing the wrongs and dirts of the other party see when we make a partnership we shake hand we say okay we'll work together but when we part ways it may be a bitter uh, experience but let go of that bitterness don't talk bad about them and then they will not talk bad about you hey good working with you it's a good time we learned from this and uh, maybe it's not working out uh, but i wish you all the best for your what you're doing and uh, it's better that we part ways but don't go backbiting or don't go gossiping about see because of me that uh, organization is doing well now i they're using all my ideas right? avoid all of that so just just let go forget focus on your organization don't look at you know there's a saying right the grass looks greener on the other side you've got grass on your side but that side looks more green uh, so you're looking there how come that side is more green that's because the sun is falling there it looks greener it's the same grass right so so just let go of these bitter uh, experiences and focus on your organization and your church or, your, or the ministry that you are doing right uh, any questions any thoughts before we close no okay would anyone like to pray and close father god we thank you for this time we thank you for this team and whatever we learn from this course you just help us to accomplish in the in this way god we surrender everything into your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed week ahead. I'll see you next Monday. God bless.